Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and I'm here to show you how to install Wire Connect and set up Corsair's AF120 RGB Elite fans. In this video, I'm going to show you the process for installing the fans, wiring them up, and the various different things to bear in mind. For example, if you buy a single fan, then all you get in the box is the fan itself and the screws to install it. And this actually puts you in a bit of a pickle because you then can't make the most of the RGB lighting because there's actually two cables with each of course there's RGB fans. One specifically for RGB that you can see clearly labeled to RGB hub and one for fan power. So what you need is multiple triple packs ideally and some other things and you can see multiple fans wired up here. Now at the end I'm going to show you a case set up with a number of these fans installed on both an all-in-one cooler, so I'm going to show you the process for that, and also just on the case itself, and how to wire them up in terms of power and RGB. Now I'd highly recommend getting at least one triple pack, and you'll see that maybe you might need two to make the most of this as you go through. And if you haven't already, purchase a triple pack because you get not only obviously the fans, and the screws to screw them in, but also a little lighting node which will allow you to connect up that RGB and that will allow for up to six RGB connections. So I'm going to show you how to set up multiple fans and how to connect them up with relative ease and the process will be a lot simpler because when you unbox multiple triple packs it may seem a bit overwhelming but don't worry because I'm here to assist you. So inside the triple pack box you get this other little additional box which has a bunch of screws in it but it also has the little node. Now this node can control up to six RGB fans and that's the reason why I said you might need two triple packs because if you're it's installing let's say 10 RGB fans then you may need more but you can see this controller also requires a USB connection and a SATA connection so that's SATA power and USB to the motherboard and I'll show you where to connect those up. But also things to bear in mind is that you will also potentially need an extra USB connector and I'll talk about that a bit more in a minute. But you'll also find included in the box this 3M double sided sticker. So if you want to put this controller somewhere in your case and fix it in place then you have this option here. Basically this sticker goes on the back and then you can attach it to the rear of your case or wherever you're planning on mounting it and they'll help keep things a little bit tidy. So that's the basic setup. So in theory, three fans are fairly straightforward. Obviously you have the RGB hub, which you connect the RGB cable to. It's clearly marked to RGB hub, and then you obviously just plug it in there. Now you will notice that the RGB hub has numbering one to six. This logic is actually used at hardware level when plugging them in because what it does basically is you need to think about the logic of how you're connecting your fans and the sort of order that they're going to go in the case because that can affect the syncing of RGB lighting and basically how that goes through the case. So if you have some RGB that goes from one fan to the next to the next to the next in a sort of nice pattern, then plugging them in... At in the right order can help with that. Now you can adjust that in the software and I'll show you the software setup later on, but it's worth keeping that in mind. It makes your life a lot easier if you plug the fans in, in the sort of logic that you want them to. So let's say the bottom three fans, you might want to go one, two, three from front to back. So you have the RGB connection in the RGB hub, and obviously we need fan power connection. So that's the other connector from the fan that runs to the motherboard. Now, if you don't have any sort of other controller, you can connect these up to the chassis fan headers. So you can see CHA fan down the bottom here, one, two, and three. So there's a potential for three fan power connections here. You might find them labeled something different on your motherboard. Sometimes it's a sys fan, for example, a system fan header. So you can connect up your fan there, and then you can control the fan speed from your motherboard software and uh, other ways as well and I'll show more on this later on but on the top of this motherboard you'll see that there are some other connections so again we have some more chassis fan connections at the top here and each motherboard is going to vary on the positioning of them so I'd recommend checking your motherboard manual to find out more about where they're positioned and what fans you can plug in where but imagine now that we have a lot of fans so you can now see I've got six fans two triple packs obviously I can connect up the RGB to the hub because there's enough connectors on there to do that so i'm going to do that now but then you also have to think about the power connections for each of these because we also need six system fan headers on the motherboard in order to connect these up now this is where things might get a bit complicated and overwhelming 
but don't worry because there are other solutions. So in each step of this video, I'm going to show you different other solutions that you can potentially do. And be sure to check out the links in the description to additional things that you can purchase that make life easier. But you can see now I've wired up those six fans and you can do it again in order. So here I've started from the bottom right as one and then two, three, moving upwards, and then on the other side, four, five, six. So the pattern of RGB would flow across those. Again, more on this later on. But then you need to connect up those fan power connections. And you can see, obviously, I'm filling up multiple ports really quickly. But there are options. You can see, for example, that I have this separate additional splitter which takes three fans and connects them into one power cable so that allows you to then plug in three fans and connect those up now these are an additional purchase they don't come with the fans or with the motherboard you do have to purchase them separately there are various different options out there but you can see it is possible sometimes you just get a y splitter which is two cables into one sometimes you can get three into one but you also need to think about the voltage that your motherboard's able to put out whether it can actually power three fans from a single header sometimes it can only do two this is obviously something i can't cover because it will vary from motherboard to motherboard but you can see that you do have this option so now we've made life a lot easier in terms of wiring the fans because we can use that splitter to then ensure we're able to plug in multiple fans as i said the lighting node controller requires a usb connection so this is this cable here that will plug into your motherboard and you can see it connects up at the bottom this motherboard has two usb headers on the bottom here that you can plug in so that's relatively easy i can just plug that in and then that will give you control of the rgb lighting via corsairs iq software which i'll show you later on in the video and then you also have the sata power connection so this is a flat connector here that plugs into a cable that comes out of your power supply unit hopefully you have one of these already if you're building your machine you bought a power supply unit you should have this cable and here's an example shot from a corsair psu i'll leave a link in the description to the full guide on this power supply unit but the logic is basically the same for most psus you're connecting out the sata connection so you'll see on the bottom right of this psu there's a SATA connector there. This is the cable. It was what it looks like is one of the examples. So it plugs in there. It's got six pins on one end that connect up to the power supply unit. And then the other end has multiple daisy chainable connectors of this flat connector. Now this used for various different things, including SSDs and hard disk drives, but also fan controllers and RGB lighting controllers. So in this case, you can see me showing that it connects up to a 2.5 inch ssd but then you can also plug in your rgb controller to this and that'll obviously ensure that it has power and then it can power those now um, it'll also work with other things like this commander core so the commander core is an additional purchase that you can get and sometimes it comes with all-in-one coolers but you can also purchase it separately and there's commander pro historically which is the same sort of thing this allows you to control both the fan rgb and the power from one box so there's a little control box that you plug in your rgb on one side and then the fan power on the other this obviously makes life a lot easier because you don't need to worry about the connections up to the motherboard in terms of the fan power so you can connect up to six fans to this in terms of rgb and power obviously you can see the process here sped up a little bit but the logic of it is fairly straightforward and this obviously makes life a lot easier because all of this can be hidden at the back of the case so you can run the cables from this to the rear of your case plug it all in and then you can control both the fan power and the rgb lighting from corsair's iq software and again this control box is basically the same sort of logic as the rgb one because it has a usb connection and a sata power connection but then it gives you more flexibility in terms of the control however it is only limited to six as you can see so you might need two of these or you might need to use one of these and the RGB controller and some of your system fan headers. So you kind of need to juggle what you're going to do depending on how many fans you're going to put in your system. Here you can see again this requires USB connection and the SATA connection. Exactly the same logic. But then what do you do if you have seven fans? Obviously now I can't plug this fan into that controller. So that's obviously a problem. But you can still make use of the RGB hub and plug that in. RGB in there and then the fan power can go in your motherboard. And here, obviously, now we have the situation where we have two USB connections and two SATA connections. Now, if you have a motherboard with only have one USB connection on your motherboard, that could be a problem. You can see this one's got two, so I can plug these two in with relative ease. However, if you are using more fans than more USB headers from more lighting nodes, 
could potentially be an issue. And also, I'm using an all-in-one cooler that needs a USB connection. Here's another solution. This is a thing that I purchase regularly, a handy little USB splitter. It has two connections on it that then go into a single USB connection. And I'll leave a link to this in the description. And it's a really simple tool, really cheap as well. And you can basically just plug those two USB connections into it and then you have one that comes out. So you've now then freed up space on the motherboard that you can use for other things, whether it's an all-in-one cooler or something else. You can buy these that come with four USB connections into one. This is obviously one example, but you can buy bigger ones that'll have even more. So if you do need to connect up multiple USB ports into one or two USB ports on your motherboard, there are options. But again, it is an additional purchase that you need to get. But here you can see that I've put the Commander Core and the RGB hub into this one controller that then plugs into the USB header on the motherboard. I'm obviously demonstrating this all outside the case just so you can see it with ease. But then, you know, obviously, once you go about the installation process and set it up in the case, then you just run these cables through to the front and plug them in. So you can see that this thing comes with a 3M sticker on the back of it in the same way that the lighting node does. So you can just peel that off and then stick it somewhere in the case. You can see, obviously, this is further into the build process where I've done a lot of the work. But that connects up and then runs to the front and plugs into that USB header on the bottom of the motherboard. And you will also notice that the RGB core and things are installed here. So obviously I've installed a lot of the fans here. Now I've done a video separately on the logic of how to install your fans and the direction that you should face them for the best cooling. I'll leave a link to that in the description. But you can see what I've done here. So this is earlier in the video is the fans on the rear of the case at the moment are intake fans. So they're pulling air from the back of the case into the case itself. I'm also setting these bottom fans as intake as well, which means they have to be face down towards the bottom. So where the rear sort of venting bits on these fans is facing is the direction the air is being pulled in from. So you can see basically we're going to be sucking cold air in from the bottom and from that side panel on the rear. And then I'm going to exhaust out of the top and uh, the back, back left as well a bit later on. So you have the fan screws. Obviously, I've talked about the wiring, but obviously you also need to screw those fans into your case. So setting them up and screwing in from the underside in this instance and just screwing them onto the bottom after removing the dust tray to take those off and set that up and screw those into place. And here you can see the finished product and the direction the air would get sucked in. So this was the view from above. It will be pulled up from the bottom and then pushed up to the top. I'm going to top mount a radiator, which you'll see in a minute. And then we have to run those cables to the rear. So obviously, I'm going to use the RGB hub for these. Now, I have two different setups with fans. So I'm going to use six fans are going to get connected up to the RGB hub. And then the power for those will be connected up separately to the motherboard. And also I'm going to use that RGB controller in terms of the commander core for the all-in-one cooler as well. So you'll see the final setup and what it looks like. We've got 10 fans total in the case. So you sort of need to work out how you're going to connect those up because you might be using both of these. Now, if you don't have the commander core, obviously you'll need two RGB hubs if you're going to connect up 10 fans and you're probably going to need some splitter cables. So here you can see me using the splitter cable to set up the power connection there. So you've got three fans going into one and then that connects up to the bottom of the motherboard on that chassis fan header or system fan header, depending on what you've got marked on there. Again, here you can see a close-up look at that. So chassis fan 234, doesn't really matter which one you use, it's just the logic of that. And you will be able to adjust the fan speed from your motherboard software or from the BIOS if you're doing it this way as well, rather than using the Commander Core or Commander Pro or Commander Core XT. So then I have obviously set up those six fans now along the side and the bottom and the RGB and power is set up for those as well. But then I'm installing another fan at the rear and obviously you need to run the RGB connector to the back as well. But then I can just connect up the power to the motherboard at the top. So it's quite a flexibility in where you can sort of run cables and where you can plug them in for the most part. You will find there are multiple different points on the motherboard usually where your system fan headers or chassis fan headers are located. So it is pretty easy to hide a lot of the cables, although you will notice a lot of mess at the back of my case. But that's because I've not gone to the cable tidying here because I'm going to be removing these fans to swap out and change around in this build later on. So here you can see we plug in those RGB connections again 
Also, you can see me struggling with that because of where I'd mounted it. So just think about that process. Now, here I'm also using the Corsair H150i Elite Capolix cooler. And I'm going to replace the standard fans that come with it with these AF120 RGB Elite. So it is possible to do this if you want to using the Corsair one as an example. But you can use these with any cooler you want. So let's say NZXT, for example, we could replace a Kraken cooler RGB fans with these RGB fans and then run them through to the back. We use the long screws. And in this instance, I'm going to be top mounting this radiator. So I'm facing the fans so that they face downwards into the case because that will pull cold air through there, up through the radiator and out the top. So you use long screws to mount them to the radiator. And those are the same long screws that come with the radiator when you bought it. So the all-in-one cooler has some long screws that you mount the fans to the rad on. And then you use the small screws to mount the radiator to the case itself. Or in this case, the little fan tray that goes to the top. And in this case, which is the NZXT H9 Elite, which I'll leave a link to in the description. I've done a video on separately. But you can see that this just sort of slots back into there. And then you can run both the fan and RGB power connections through to the rear. Obviously, this all-in-one cooler is controlled by that Commander Core, which I showed you earlier on, which comes with it. So if you're purchasing this all-in-one cooler, then you get those things together. So it makes life a bit easier. But you can purchase that Commander separately, a variant of it. Uh, which then obviously makes those connections a bit easier. But now I need to connect up the power and RGB to those. Again, think about the logic of where you're connecting these fans and the order you want the RGB to go in, because you can make sure at a hardware level that you can plug those in and connect them up. And then obviously make sure you have the SATA power connectors. So don't forget that you need SATA power for the commander core and for the RGB hub. And you also need to make sure you've got the USB connections. And in this case, I've got the RGB hub, the commander core and the pump head for an all-in-one cooler all need USB connections in order to be able to control them from IQ. But here we have the final product as it is set up in the case. And what I found was that when I turned it on, despite everything being wired in properly, some of the fans RGB lighting wasn't working properly. Now, you may well have the same issue. Don't panic because it turns out that's actually just because it hadn't got into Windows, run IQ, and then have it recognize the other fans that were connected up. So the ones that were connected up to the RGB node, lighting node core, were working, but the ones on the commander core weren't. And I'll show you why in a second. So once you get into IQ and download that, you can go through various different things. Now you'll see that murals were turned on by default, so that's affecting the RGB lighting. Murals you can see on the basically home page of IQ, and that applies RGB across to anything that's connected up that has RGB lighting on it. You can click on those and it will change between them, and it's applying that lighting to both the Elite Capolix cooler via the Commander core and to the other fans via the lighting node core every time you click on it. But you'll need to disable that lighting if you want to individually change the RGB throughout the case and on individual fans because it's sort of a synced lighting effect that's applied to them. So with the lighting setup, the other important point to note is that you need to go into your lighting node core lighting setup and make sure that you've selected the right fans. So here you can see it's actually set up on the bottom where it says setup lighting channel one, that it's actually set to QL RGB fans, so as in the QL 120s. That's what it defaulted to on here, probably because I'd done it previously with QL fans, but you can also select from a number of other ones. You will notice also that you can reposition these in the software. As I mentioned earlier on, you can adjust the position of where they go. And the reason for that is what I was talking about with the hardware wiring and sort of the logic of where you wire them up. Anyway, select from the setup lighting channel the right fans, in this case, the eight LED series fans will then give you the proper lighting from these. If you don't see AF120 elites in there, it might change in the future. The software obviously gets updated. But now we have all of the six fans that I've connected up to it set up there. And then you can go into the Elite Capolix. Now the Capolix cooler has a lighting setup wizard that will run through what fans are connected up to the port and automatically detect which ones you've plugged into which in terms of the RGB. But it'll also show you this. So what it does is it lights up a single 
LED on there in an individual color. So you can see, for example, on the right hand side here, we've got red, yellow, green running up the top and then blue, purple and sort of a pinkish color on there. And that shows the order of the RGB lighting. But if you find you've got one fan that's in the wrong position, you can move them around in the software so they'll actually be in the right order for when you're running sort of fancy RGB lighting effects that run across multiple fans going from one to the next. So you also need to make sure you disable those murals and then basically we're going to apply a setting to it, so the lighting settings. You have a variety of options in here once you go click on that plus button for the lighting layers and you can apply various different layered effects and all sorts of other effects in here. But one of them that's worth looking at is lighting link. Lighting link applies the same RGB lighting across both lots of fans. So the ones that are connected up both to the Elite Capolix and the lighting no core. You do, however, need to make sure that you disable murals on both the Elite Capolix and the lighting node core before this will work, because otherwise one lot of fans will be forced into one RGB lighting while the other is on a different one, even though you've chosen lighting link. So now I've done that, I can go into the lighting link settings and I can choose which one I want. So you can see you can go through color shift, rainbow or static color. We can choose from a number of different colors in here, or you can select your own through a palette and you can adjust these on the fly and it'll apply to all of them. And you'll notice the ring on the Elite Capolix cooler is also changing. So you can adjust this so that every fan has the same thing, or you can go through and click on one that will spin through. So you can see this visor effect, for example, is spinning through each of these fans individually in order. This is what I was saying about making sure the hardware is set up correctly so that they're in the right order on the controllers, but also the fact that you can adjust them within the software so you can make effects like that run through if you want to. Now, hardware lighting is also important. So you'll see hardware lighting channel one. This essentially runs these colors when IQ isn't running. So this stores this sort of in the memory. Now, this is important because if you lock your PC or if you don't have IQ running all the time or if you, you know, when you've just turned your PC on, this is the color it will default to instead of the standard rainbow effect. So you can go into both the Elite Capolix cooler and the lighting node core and set a hardware lighting. In my case, I'm using static blue where it will default to that as a standard. And then obviously you can change it so it has different effects on it when you've got IQ running. So that's the setup process and the wiring and, and obviously all the software changes that you can make. Hopefully this has been an interesting insight into the setup process and been useful to you if it has and subscribe for more and let me know in the comments what you thought maybe consider heading over to your discord to get involved in the chat there and thanks very much for watching here you can see the final product and enjoy some of that you've made it right to the end of the video you brilliant legend you if you've enjoyed it click that subscribe button give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions if you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.